at six, hundreds gathered on campus today to protest President Trump's temporary ban on refugees. Who was involved and what does this say about student voices across the country? And students at the University of California, Berkeley erupted into protests last night over a planned conservative speaker. How did the president react to those protests? Plus, Arnold Schwarzenegger is responding to criticisms made by Trump at the National Prayer Breakfast this morning. We'll have more on the story right here on Citrus TV News, live at 6. This is Citrus TV News, live at 6, your campus news leader. Good evening, I'm Michael Tricarico. And I'm Brooke Glatz. Today, SU students gathered together to show their support for refugees. The rally began at 3 in the afternoon at Krauss Heinz Hall, marching towards the promenade and ended at the Life Sciences Building. It also included speeches from people with refugee backgrounds and student organizers. The rally was a joint effort of groups such as Oxfam, Amnesty International, and Democracy Matters. Three SU professors will be discussing the historic discovery of gravitational waves on a panel tonight in New York City. The SU professors will be joined by a professor from MIT. SU alumnus Bob Dotson will be moderating the Q&A style discussion. After the show, be sure to check out the SU News website where the event will be live streamed at 7 p.m. Three more retail stores have closed in Shoppingtown Mall. Tuxedo Junction, Caramel Corn, and Yankee Candle have all closed their doors after decades of business. A majority of the mall is boarded up and only a few retailers remain. Currently, the DeWitt Community Library and the movie theater create the most traffic, but the library is moving out of the mall later this year. And outside today, you've probably gotten caught in the snow. Jack Watson is here to break everything down for us. Jack? Well, happy Groundhog Day, guys, and it certainly was. It turned out to be a pretty nice day, as we can see here. A.M. snow on our commute to class and a clear afternoon followed that. 23 degrees right about now. It's pretty clear out, as we saw earlier. But is there snow in store for next week? Find out on my full forecast when Citrus TV News Live at 6 returns, guys. Thanks, Jack. Coming up, a prison guard is dead in Delaware after a lengthy hostage situation. And the Prime Minister of Israel is planning to build new communities in the West Bank after talks with Trump. All this and more after the break. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. 
scheduled phone call between President Trump and Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull went sour yesterday after a disagreement concerning refugees. Senior U.S. officials say that President Obama agreed to take in more than 1,000 mostly Muslim refugees who were denied entry into Australia last year. Trump grew angry at the deal and cut the call short by 35 minutes. As of today, Turnbull has refused to comment on the nature of the call. Senator Cory Gardner stressed the importance of staying close allies with Australia and other countries moving forward. Australia is a great ally. They will continue to be, and we need to work hard to make sure that our allies, whether it's Australia or the United Kingdom uh, or other allies around the globe, know that the United States is going to stand strong with them and that we have their backs. One guard is dead after a prison hostage standoff in Delaware. The standoff stretched for nearly a day at the James T. Vaughn Correctional Center. According to reports, Sergeant, S Sergeant Steve Floyd was found unresponsive at the scene. Four prison workers were taken hostage, and it is unclear how Floyd died. Investigators say they are considering a, all 120 inmates as suspects. Floyd was a 16-year-old veteran of the force. Perry Phelps spoke about his death earlier today. All of us mourn the family of Sergeant Floyd. And we also stand today <clears throat> in solidarity with all correctional employees and law enforcement. I have ordered flags across the first state to be flown at half staff. President Donald Trump has threatened to withdraw federal funding from the University of California, Berkeley over violations of free speech. Violent protests broke out at the university over a planned speech by Milo Yiannopoulos from Breitbart News. In response, the university canceled the speech. After hearing about the protests, President Trump tweeted, quote, If UC Berkeley does not allow free speech and practices violence on innocent people with a different view, dot, 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 no federal funds, question mark, end quote. UC Berkeley has yet to respond to the president's threat. Melania Trump has hired a new high-level chief of staff, marking her first political appointment as first lady. She picked Lindsey Reynolds, who served under the George W. Bush administration as an associate director for the White House Visitor's Office. Reynolds will be in charge of representing the First Lady in the East Wing. Other leading candidates and newly hired employees for the staff include Natalie Jones and Stephanie Winston Wolkoff. And Defense Secretary Jim Mattis met with the top South Korean officials today. During the meeting, the officials agreed to continue with the deployment of the new missile defense system. The system will intercept missiles and can reach all of South Korea and some parts of Japan. In the agreement between South Korea and the United States, South Korea would provide the base for the system, while the United States would provide the funding and building. South Korea's Director of National Security said Security Mattis, uh, Secretary Mattis maintained the United States' firm co defense commitment to South Korea. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced in a controversial move yesterday that Israel is building a new settlement in the West Bank. There will be 5,500 units built on the West Bank and 500 units in the East Jerusalem. This announcement was made two days after President Trump spoke to Prime Minister Netanyahu. This is the largest settlement expansion since 2013. And the British government formally announced its strategy in withdrawing from the European Union today. A 77-page paper was published detailing Theresa May's plan. Specifically, the paper describes the new trade agreements, arrangements for the 2.8 million EU citizens that live in the United Kingdom, and issues surrounding the border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. And the U.S. Treasury Department announced that they will now allow companies to do limited business with Russia's Federal Security Service. At the end of the Obama administration, sanctions limited business to $5,000 for the calendar year. White House Secretary Sean Spicer commented that they were not easing sanctions and that it is commonplace to review sanctions after they have been put into place. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Well, guys, the weather we saw today, 27 degrees was our high on and off snow, pretty much characterizing the entire day with winds coming out of the west at around 19 miles per hour. A pretty windy day, making it feel a lot colder than that forecasted temperature. Now taking a look at current temperatures in and around our area, Syracuse 23, Cortland 25, and Ithaca 
27. Now we take a look at our future radar here. This is going into the overnight hours and we see this big development here moving east and narrowly missing the Syracuse area, which is absolutely fantastic for people like me who are not too big fans of snow. Now taking a look at tonight's forecast, 60, 16 degrees uh, is our forecasted temperature, but it has the chance to feel even colder than that uh, with winds coming out of the west southwest at 11 miles per hour. A small chance of snow but uh, we're likely not going to see that in Syracuse as we saw from our radar. Now taking a look at our Friday day planner, 9 a.m. when we're getting up for classes, 18 degrees transitioning into noon, 21, and rounding out the day at 6 p.m., 20 degrees. We could be seeing some very, very significant sunshine. Uh, that's a big break tomorrow. Uh, it's still pretty cold, though, so do bundle up if you plan on going outside tomorrow, especially at night. Now, if you're anything like me, you're already thinking about uh, the Vir uh, the Virginia Cavaliers facing us in the Carrier Dome SU men's basketball back at, at back at it after a huge win on Wednesday. Now taking a look, 23 degrees, mostly sunny commute uh, to the dome, 14 mile an hour winds. It's going to be pretty cold. It's going to feel pretty cold at least as we take a look at our Citrus TV five day forecast. We're taking a look at overcast skies for Friday, Saturday clouds and sun characterizing, and we see a spike in temperature on Sunday, 35 degrees and 27 as the low for that day. Now taking a look at Monday, a chance of snow, and that's when we're going to see the majority of the precipitation chances taking form, and that transitions into Tuesday with a wintry mix, guys. All right, Jack, thanks so much. So you said no snow this weekend and just a little bit at the beginning of next week. When's the next time we're going to see a lot of snow? Well, that could come as early as Monday or Tuesday, depending on how cold it gets on Tuesday, we could get a significant amount of snow. There is a lot of precipitation supposed to be in the area coming from that lake effect. And Jack, you said the temperatures are gonna start warming up just a tad over the weekend. Is that when the next time that uh, the temperatures are gonna get above freezing? Probably, yeah. That's why we have wintry mix as our forecast for Tuesday and into Wednesday even. So do be prepared for some wintry mix weather early in the week, guys. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks so Jack. much for that. Coming up, a feud between the former and current host of The Apprentice. How did Arnold Schwarzenegger respond to criticisms made by the president? And Lady Gaga held a press conference today for the Super Bowl halftime show. Find out what she has in the works when we come back. Got a quarter? This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. The visa ban on the seven Muslim countries could create a shortage of doctors in the United States. According to Matthew Schick, who is the Director of Government Relations and Regulatory Control with the American Association of Medical Colleges, international medical students are essential when there is a shortage of doctors. There are 1,000 medical student application, uh, applicants affected by this ban that are currently going to be seeking medical schools this year. 
And President Trump met with members of the Harley Davidson Company this afternoon to discuss how manufacturing can unify the country. The meeting took place at the White House and executives rode their motorcycles up to the front lawns to greet the president. According to a White House official, Harley Davidson was not comfortable with the President Trump visiting the factory in anticipation of planned protests. And Ben & Jerry's has finally provided a solution to customers who wish to enjoy their product but are too busy to sit down and enjoy a pint of ice cream. This solution comes in the form of their new product, the Pint Slice. The Pint Slice is an individually wrapped slice of ice cream covered in dark chocolate and comes in four flavors, Americone Dream, Chocolate Fudge Brownie, Chocolate uh, Cookie Dough, and Vanilla Peanut Butter Cup. They have already been made available in Ben & Jerry's scoop shops and should be available nationwide by the end of the month. According to research published by a medical journal on Thursday, more than 1,200 toddlers have been injured by laundry detergent packets. The packets are much more concentrated than normal laundry detergent and can cause sensitivity in the eyes. Many toddlers believe the packets are toys or food and injure themselves after the detergent squirts out of a broken packet or the toddlers rub their eyes after touching the detergent. As a result, Procter & Gamble has launched informative ads warning parents and has made stronger packaging. And a new report ranked the 25 largest fast food companies in America on their antibiotics policies and practices. The report, called Chain Reaction 2, gave only Panera Bread and Chipotle an A rating while giving 16 companies a rating of an F. Misuse of antibiotics can cause antibiotic resistance and make it difficult to treat bacterial infections. Although companies such as Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, and Taco Bell have pledged to decrease the amount of meat used with antibiotics, the ratings are still not in the A range. The ratings went right down the tubes. It's been a total disaster. And Mark will never, ever bet against Trump again. And I want to just pray for Arnold, if we can, for those ratings, okay? That was President Donald Trump at the annual prayer breakfast this morning, offering up his own prayers to former governor of California and apprentice host Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger responded to Trump's jab a few hours later in a Twitter video, telling the president that if he is such an expert in ratings, then they should just, quote, switch jobs so that, quote, people can finally sleep comfortably again, end quote. Trump has been critical of the show's ratings since his departure as host, although he's still listed as an executive producer in the credits this season. And congratulations are in order for singer-songwriter Beyonce. Yesterday via Instagram, she announced that she was pregnant with twins, writing, quote, We have been blessed two times over. We are already incredibly grateful that our family will be growing by two, end quote. Beyonce and Jay-Z currently have a five-year-old daughter, Blue Ivy, and she's expected to give birth this summer. The Super Bowl is just three days away, and Lady Gaga says she hopes her halftime show will spread a message of inclusion and equality. The singer says whatever statements she makes during the show will be the same statements she's made her whole career. Lady Gaga would not reveal many details about the show, so the songs and, of course, the costumes will be a surprise. As for what team Gaga is rooting for, she's keeping that a secret because she doesn't want to start an argument with the family. And yesterday, NBC announced that Tamron Hill Hall is leaving the Today Show. Hall joined MSNBC in 2007 and the Today Show in 2014. NBC's official statement reads, quote, Tamron Hall was an exceptional journalist. We valued and enjoyed her work at Today and MSNBC and hoped that she would decide to stay. We are disappointed that she has chosen to leave, but we wish her the best, end quote. This announcement was made only a week after it was announced that Megyn Kelly will take over the third or fourth hour of the Today Show when she joins NBC in September. Now let's take a look at what's to come in sports. Chris Venson is here to tell us what to expect. Thanks, Michael. Coming up in sports, it came down the wire for the Syracuse men's team last night. Could the Orange complete its comeback in overtime? We have highlights after the break. You won't want to miss it. Got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. 
That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. <laughs> Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Hi, I'm Chris Venzen. Last weekend, the Syracuse men, last week, the Syracuse men's basketball team upset number six Florida State and earned what many believe to be its signature win of the season. But last night, the Orange was back in action, and the team delivered a performance for the ages. Let's take a look at how it all went down in Raleigh. NC State, Galen, he had a really big game last week for Syracuse against FSU, but early on, Cuse is down big in the second. Freshman Dennis Smith Jr., high off the glass for the reverse layup. That gives NC State its largest lead of the game, 16 points. Smith Jr. had a triple-double in that one. Things looking bleak, but here to the rescue comes John Gillen. He hits this three-pointer. He went nine from ten, absurd, from behind the arc on the night. And the very next possession, dragging him back by himself, Gillen from deep. Cuse down four. Gillen scored 20 in the final six minutes by himself. Well, fast forward, ten seconds left. Tie ball game. Maverick Rowan hits the go-ahead three, and it's over, right? That's, that's it. Wrong. Gillen walks it down the court, and who else do you think is going to take this one? He gets into the corner, he lofts up a shot, and nails it. Game tied at 87. Rowan misses on the other end. We get free basketball. It's overtime, and SU dominated. Gillen finds White, gets the reverse layup, puts Syracuse up seven with just 2.30 left in overtime, and Gillen, he gets the walk off 100 to 93, your final score. Let's take a listen to Gillen and Jim Beheim. Man, uh, he's, he actually freed me up, so I was just like, I, it felt good. I just tried to keep my elbows straight and shoot it like it was a normal shot. It wasn't a lot of space, but, I mean, it was enough to get my shot off, and once I hit a few, I feel like I'm hot. I think somebody said it was six minutes to go and down 13. Um, you know, we made a couple steals off the press, and then we got, uh, got a couple quick baskets. Uh, John's... Got it figured out. It took him a while, but you know he is a good offensive player. That's why we recruited him. Um, you know he can shoot. We knew that. Chad Gillen can shoot might be the understatement of the year. Well, from one basketball court to the other, the Syracuse women's basketball team hosts Pittsburgh tonight in the Carrier Dome. SU is undefeated at home this regular season, thanks in large part to one of the best backcourts in the country. Point guard Alexis Peterson is the nation's third leading scorer with nearly 25 points per game. Redshirt senior Brittany Sykes, she's no slouch herself. The shooting guard averages 19 a game. Pitt gets to face SU's dynamic duo for the first time this season at 7 o'clock, and the ladies are coming into the matchup on fire. Sykes scored a career-high 31 points against Sunday in Cuse's upset win of number 19 Virginia Tech, and a week ago, Peterson dropped 24 in a blowout of number 14 Miami. Well, it's February 2nd, and if any of you Syracuse lacrosse fanatics are keeping track, there are only nine, games, nine days until SU's first game of the year. Expectations for Cuse are high and, once again, through the roof, 
Midfielder Sergio Salcido just wants to start the season and eliminate any doubt about this team's potential. We scored more goals if we hit can the opportunities that we got. Um, so I think just kind of just continuing to work on our shooting, um, you know, making sure we're taking the right shots as, as an offense and making sure that every possession we're getting the best shot as an offense. Early in the year, you're a little bit more anxious. You're still trying to figure out, you know, how certain teams play defense. Uh, so I think the biggest thing with that is just understanding, you know, your opponent a little better. You know, we don't really have much film going in the early parts of the year because teams haven't played any games yet. In the NBA, the Knicks escaped a loss last night versus the Nets in comeback fashion. Final score, 95-90. Kristaps Porzingis' double-double led the way for New York, and on a night when star forward Carmelo Anthony only scored 15 points, the Knicks managed to rally down 10 for the win late in the fourth quarter. Brooklyn maintains its infamous record as the worst team in the league this season. The Knicks, meanwhile, move to 22-29 and, and snap a two-game road lead losing streak. And we'll be right back. Stay tuned. I'm going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science, become the mayor or something, make the situation better for other people. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back, Jack. What am I going to need to wear tomorrow morning when I'm going to class? Well, first of all, Q skier. Lots and lots of Q skier in preparation for our big game against Virginia in the Dome on Saturday. But it is going to be cold, even though there's not going to be any snow. Around 23, 22 degrees uh, by noontime. So do be prepared for that. Wear those, uh, you know, Columbia jackets. Get a lot of socks. You know, long johns work for me. They're a lifesaver. Great. Give it a all try. Right. Thank, Thank so you. Much, Jack. Coming up on OTN, we have On the Bench at 6.30. And once you're done with all that sports news, be sure to check out that News with Juice and Java. And then stay tuned for Citrus TV's political talk show, Talking Points, at 7.30. Well, today is Groundhog Day, and, well, the most famous groundhog in the United States shot his, saw his shadow this morning. Thus predicting six more weeks of winter. As an annual tradition, members of Punxsutawney Groundhogs Club Inner Circle shared Phil's forecast by poem. As far as records show, Punxsutawney Phil has now predicted more winter 103 times and in early spring just 18. Well, that's all the time we have tonight. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Citrus TV News. I'm Michael Tricarico. And I'm Brooke Watts. Have a great night, Syracuse.